Okay, this is the module two review. Um, this will be very similar to your test, so let's take a look. What place value is the underlined number? So we look right here at the eights, and we know that's the hundredth spot, so we're going to put hundredths. Next, it's the nine, that's the tenth place. This right here, that zero, is in the thousandth place. And this one, name number in the hundredth place. The eight is in the hundredth place. This one says tenth, and that is the four. So that's what your first five questions will look like on your test. Let's move to the next section. On this section, I either give you a fraction, decimal, or percent, and then you have to change it to whatever the blank is. So on this one, we have 10 20 fifths, and we're going to change that to a decimal. So to do that, I'm going to have my calculator right here if you need it. And to change a fraction to a decimal, we divide the top number by the bottom number. And yes, you have to show your steps if you want full points. And I got 0 0.4. So that's my decimal. To change a decimal into a percent, we move the decimal two spots to the right. And then here we put four, 0. So that is 40%. On the next one, we have a decimal. And I'm going to change that to a fraction. The zero is in the hundredths place, so I'm going to do 10 over 100. And I can see I can simplify that. I'm going to simplify that by 10. And I get 1 tenth as my fraction. Then we're going to look over at percent. I'm going to transfer my decimal over here. I'm going to move my decimal two times to the right, and I get 10%. On the next one, we have 9%. And I'm going to write that as a fraction first. So a percent is out of 100, so we're going to write 9 over 100. And that's your answer because you cannot simplify that. To write 9 hundredths as a decimal, I need to put the 9 in the hundredths place. So the 9 goes in the hundredths place, and then a 0 goes right in front of it. So that's your answer. Okay, our next one is 1.60. We need to make sure we're keeping that whole number with us. I'm going to do the percent first, so 1.60. I move my decimal two times. I get 160%. Let's take this to a fraction now. My whole number is 1, and we have 60 on top, and it's in the hundredths place. We're going to simplify that. To simplify that, I am going to divide by 20. If I do that on the top, I have to keep it equal. My whole number comes over. 60 divided by 20 is 3. 100 divided by 20 is 5. Our next one we're going to write as a decimal, 7 tenths. So we're going to put 7 in the tenth spot. We're then going to take our decimal, and we're going to move it 2 times to the right, and we get 70%. And our last one on this side, 5.5%. I'm going to put it to a decimal first. So to do that, I go 1, 2. And in that blank spot, I'm putting a zero. So 0 0.055. And to write that as a fraction, that's 55 over 1,000, because that 5 is in the thousandth spot. And I'm going to divide by 5. 55 divided by 5 is 11. And then 1,000 divided by 5, we get 200. And that's your answer there. And if you will notice, up here at the directions, it states each box is worth two points, one point for work slash the steps, and one point for the answer. So if I look at this box, here's my work, here's my answer, so that would be two points. On this one, my steps are showing, moving the decimal, and then my answer. If you're not doing the steps or the work part, you won't be receiving full credit, because I need to make sure you're understanding the meaning behind it. Okay, let's go to the next page. We're on each of these, each box is worth four points. One, one a piece for the answer, and then one a piece for the work. So let's look at our numbers. We're going to do our tic-tac-toe. If you want a list, that's fine. Okay. I'm just going to have them both set up right here. They're both going to look pretty similar. Now, I know the number that can go into both of those. If I take 21 times 3, I'll get 63. So I can put 21 into both of them. 21 times 3 is 63, and 21 times 1 is 21. So our um, GCF is 21. 
And then I'm just going to transfer the same thing right on over here for our LCM. But instead of circling the 21, I get to multiply all of them together. And when I do that, I get 63. Okay, our next one has 45 and 72. I know 9 can go into 45 5 times, and I know 9 can go into 72 8 times. So I can't bring 5 and 8 down, so my answer is 9 for the GCF. And over here I'm bringing out that 9 again, but it's LCM, so we have to multiply them all together. So 9 times 5 times 8 is 360. Okay, and now we're down to the order of the rational numbers. Sorry that they're a bit blurry, but we're going to get through. We're going to order them least to greatest. So I'm going to look for my negative numbers first because I know those are the smallest. Now, these are decimals already or a whole number, so I don't have to work with that. But this one is 71, negative 71 and one-third. If you look at your um, benchmark sheet, you'll see that one-third is 0.3 repeating. So I'm going to change that over to 73 and one-third. To show that it's repeating, we need to put that bar line over the 3. I also want to go ahead and change this number. 5 6 gives us 72.83 with a bar over the 3. Because when we do 5 divided by 6, that's what we get. So I did 5 divided by 6 there, and I got 0.83 repeating. Now, we're doing least to greatest, so let's look at our negatives. I know that this one comes first because it's 73, so 73 and one-third, then negative 72, then negative 71.1. So I have those three done. Now let's look at our decimals. This one is 72.83 repeating. This is 72.25. If I look at my tenths place, the 8 is bigger than the 2, so this one comes first and we're rounding it up with the original fraction of 72 and 5 6. If you wrote it what it changed into, that's fine. I'll t make sure I take a look at that. In our last one, Mr. Link stopped for gas before starting on a short road trip. The change in the amount of gas is his, in his gas tank is 5.5. Plot the chain in, change in the amount of gas in Mr. Link's gas tank and its opposite. So we're plotting that and it's opposite, so we should have two dots here. If I can spell dots, I was starting to write points. So 5.5 would be right here. And then the opposite of 5.5 is negative 5.5. And which statement about the plots pointed on the number line is true? The distance of both points from each other is 5.5. So that's saying from here to here is 5.5. That is not correct. That's more than 5.5. Both points have an absolute value of 5.5. Absolute value means um, the distance to zero on a number line. And each of these, if we find the absolute value, is going to just be 5.5 because absolute values have to be positive. 5.5 is 5.5 spots away from zero and negative 5.5 is 5.5 spots away from zero. So that is our correct answer. And that is it. Remember, there is a gim kit that you can also play.